Hey guys, Sam Cawthorn here, CEO and founder of Speakers TV. And wherever you are in the world, we're so glad that you've tuned in to this episode here on Thursday. We have brought to you some of the best speakers in the world. And I'm super excited that you made the decision, decision to tune in. And in this episode, we've actually brought to you some of the best speakers in the world to really help you, to help you to learn this as your powerful instrument to get your voice out in the world and if you don't know what your message is you don't know what your story is then you have tuned in to the right TV show and so here at Speakers TV where we've got uh, an amazing collection of testimonials of people sharing their best practice but I know that you'll get an amazing value from this episode welcome to Speakers TV first speaker. Our first speaker is not only the co-founder and deputy CEO of Imperious Solutions, an AI company that has won over 20 industry business awards. He served over 300,000 corporate users of Fortune 500 firms in bringing in AI to their firm. Not only is he a author, a global speaker, an author of the disruption of, uh, sorry, the future of disruption of AI, but he's also a tr speaker's tribe leader of Singapore. <laughs> and a friend of mine, please welcome to the stage, Tony Tan. Let me share something that most of us might not know that I have only learned of recently. Today, all of us here is in the fourth industrial revolution. The first was about mechanization. The second was about mass production. The third is about communication. And the fourth industrial revolution is about digital disruptions. The fourth industrial revolution is also known as the age of artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? At its most fundamental state, it's taking lots of data, apply a set of rules over it to derive an outcome or to solve a problem. But why are there so much confusion about AI. How many of you here have uncertainty, anxiety, or even a little fear that one day AI 
will take over humanity. Can I have a show of hands, please? Yes, quite a few of us. And I'm not surprised. In reality, there are three different types of AI. The first type of AI is artificial narrow intelligence. It is called narrow because it can only do one task and do it very well. Unlike we human beings, it can't multitask. One of the most famous examples you might heard of is an AI program by IBM called Deep Blue who had beaten the Russian chess grandmaster Garry Kasparov. Closer to home, all of you who has a habit of talking to Siri, that's an example of this type of technology. Currently, 100% of all AI use cases in the world belongs to artificial narrow intelligence. And for the duration of this talk, this is the only AI that I'll be talking about. The second type of AI is called artificial general intelligence. For a long time now, the AI community has been trying to build an AI that reaches the intelligence of humans. To do that, they need to map the human brain. In a human brain, there are 86 billion neurons. With the latest computer and supercomputers that we have, we are able to map a grand total of 307 neurons. In case you are wondering, that's the brain of a tapeworm. <laughs> yes, that is where AI is today. Of course, we fantasize, right? We want a robot like 3CPO as our domestic helper to do our language translation for our kids. But in reality, in reality, what we really have is iRobot, your friendly vacuum cleaner. The third type of artificial intelligence that we have is artificial super intelligence. That is a state of intelligence where machine intelligence has surpassed human intelligence. One of the possible examples for those of you who are fans of Terminator, you have realized there's this computer called Skynet that's directing all these cyborgs to kill off humanity. But we all know that is pure fantasy. Artificial narrow intelligence is already powering the rise of a group of digital influencers in the world. And the most famous is Sophia. Sophia charges in excess of 58,000 pounds per keynote. I'm not sure how many of us today can say the same <laughs> for our rates. Of course, we aspire to be. Will, the question is, will Sophia and people like them take away our roles as influencers, as human influencers? The answer right now, I want to give everybody it's an absolute no. Why is that? Because Sophia lacked consciousness. As such, she's not able to reason, she's not creative, she doesn't have common sense, and she's not able to relate with us humans well. Sophia will never be a powerful storyteller. However, we need to harness the underlying technology of Sophia to amplify ourselves as powerful influencers. And there's three ways we can do it. And I've experienced these three ways due to a professional and personal crisis of my life. I'm a co-founder and a sales leader of an IT organization for the past 20 years. In these 20 years, I've trained over 300 sales account managers and product specialists in presentation skills. And I realized it takes me about 15 hours to get them to a certain level of competency. But even that is not enough. We all know our presentation degrades over time from a lack of practice. I need to find another 15 hours just to get them current with their skills. I've been thinking, 
There must be a better way to do this. Two years ago, 2018, my life hit a crisis. In a period between January and February, I have a 100% turnover of my sales force. This is due to personal and professional reasons. As a result of that, my sales plunged by over 90%. I was flooded with customer queries. I have to answer to customer problems. I have to hire a brand new sales team and I have to train them. And if this wasn't enough, my back-end operations was suffering from low productivity due to doing too much repetitive processes. It was a perfect storm. I've never gone through so much stress, had anxiety attacks in my life. In fact, I've reached a low point of my life. If I allow this to continue, 75 of my employees will have lost their jobs. And with them, the massive pain and suffering that were brought to their families. It was at this point that we have decided to embrace AI, to build an AI platform, to optimize our op operation, and to elevate our issues. Today, with an AI platform in place, we are able to automate our backend and improve productivity by over 40%. We have implemented an AI assistant, or known as a chatbot, that automates inquiries from our customers that reduce the load on our sales team by 20%. We are also able to bring in an AI communication coach to coach our sales team so that they are able to be powerful communicators and get the results that my company needs. We are now far stronger than where were we before the crisis. And I'd like to share with all of you here three ways that you can use AI to amplify your ability as influencers. It does not matter if you are an entrepreneur or you are a speaker. It applies to everyone. Number one, communication. We all know communication is the number one tool, skill to have in this world. And all great influencers has to be great communicators. To do that, we need to practice and get feedback constantly. But is it always possible? Imagine if you have an AI coach in your pocket. Imagine if you have it in your smartphone. Before every important presentation or important speech, you take it out and the AI in there is able to guide you on your non-verbals, on your body language. Are you stroking your chin a little bit too much? It will tell you. Do you have belly insecurity? Or oh, you could be a dancer on the stage that could distract your presentation. Let AI feedback to you and guide you so that you are able to reduce these movements to be a better communicator. Tonality. In our presentations, we do not want to come across as medicated, as my coach used to say, or we do not want to shout throughout the presentation. We want to optimize our energy levels so that we are able to engage our audience in effective ways. Let AI guide you and give you feedback to manage your energy levels so that you can ace your presentation with your audience every time. Filler words. We all have filler words. It's made worse with a lack of practice. And sometimes we don't even know we have filler words. Let AI help us to identify our filler words and eliminate them so that we become better communicators. At the end of the day, the AI will be able to give us an average score of how we're we doing as communicators and we are able to practice against it to up our game. Number two, engagements. Marketeers are looking at a set of metrics 
to gauge how effective is an influencer today. One of the most important metrics they look at is engagement rates. Engagement rates like likes, shares, comments, and length of view. With these engagement rates, they will decide which influencer to hire and how much to pay. Needless to say, personalized end user experience for your users and your followers is now critical. Yet, there's only one of you. You can't be everywhere at the same time. How are you going to provide this personalized service? Have no fear. AI is here to help you. With the latest digital imaging technology augmented by AI, we are able to create an exact virtual clone of you with the same exact physical and emotional attributes so that you are able to provide this type of services. We call this the virtual human. Let's take a look at what is this virtual human as it could be you. Uh, that was on purpose to get your attention. <laughs> imagine, imagine there's hundreds of you, thousands of you engaging your subscribers and your followers every second, every moment, every day, answering questions, solving problems, helping you to sell your product and services. Let AI help you to increase your effectiveness let AI increase your results and up your engagement rates. The third area of where AI can help you is in work optimization. Influencers are a busy bunch of people. We all know that. They have to do podcasts. They have to blog. They have to do video content. They have to appear on YouTube. They have to write books and they have to speak. They need to do more with less. We need to optimize their workflow. And yet, every day, they are doing the non-sexy stuff but critical to their operations. For example, they need to invoice their clients on time to get paid. They need to pay their bills to their suppliers on time so that all their social media platforms run well. They need to back up their critical content. How many of you here in the last 24 months have lost data because you did not back up? Can I have a show of hands, please? Oh, very good. In fact, it's, there's not many of you. But backing out of data, we know, is critical. Let AI help you with this mundane task. Digital worker is a class of technology that sits within your computers. They work tirelessly. They do not eat. They do not sleep. They do not take medical leave. And most importantly, they are always accurate in their work and they will never give us an attitude. <laughs> so let digital workers take away the mundane, help you to invoice your customers, help you to play, pay your suppliers, and help you to back up your critical content so that you're able to do more with less and optimize your life and create more viral content. Now the question is, would you all like to see what is it like to live a day of an AI-powered influencer. Yes. yes? Let me show you a two-minute video of the possibilities.
I'm interested in one of the courses in the school. Thank you for your inquiry. We have many courses available. Hi, I want to find out um, how do I change my course date because I realize there's a crash in my calendar. We have three other dates available. Wow, I think I might just get it. That's an excellent choice. Have you ever felt That was a great speech, man! Thanks, Alvin! Can I book you for the next three events? Absolutely! That's brilliant, man! That's brilliant! My sincere vision for all of us here today is to harness AI, combine the power of AI to the strength of humanity and fuse them together to create an AI-powered influencer so that we can rise above the crowd, leapfrog our competition and most importantly, be unstoppable. My name is Tony Tan, and I'm the future in the present. Thank you! Cawthorn here, CEO and founder of Speakers Institute. If you give me 60 seconds of your time, I'll show you how to set up an online webinar in 48 hours while growing your authentic followers to tens of thousands and then teach you how to package your IP so they buy your programs online using what we call influence on video. What this means is you talk to camera, share your value and then stack your offerings and create urgency in a way that makes it so irresistible that they click the button and purchase your high ticket sale. Talk with any of our clients globally and I promise you will not find anyone that does what we do. All you have to do is to create an online event, share your ideas and then stack your offerings just like this. And here's the big secret. Everyone is online right now searching for people just like you to help them learn things that you already know. There are people doing it right now but they probably don't know as much as you. So right now is your chance to learn how to sell online and my influence on video formula is easy to use and foolproof for anyone to master. Just recently, I did a one and a half hour video online to only 40 people and at the end, 10 of them bought my $4,000 product all by one click of the button. It was seamless. So if you want me to show you how to influence on video, stack your offerings that make it irresistible, learn my exact script so you can come across authentic and real and create urgency so then they buy immediately, then click on the link below and join my free masterclass. I mean, uh, how how good the feeling was after completing the session, and and, and I think the feedbacks uh, uh, were were just were just too good. So I mean, that is uh, that is forcing me to think beyond. Uh, I, I think it was pretty linear thinking earlier, and now it is pretty diversified. So that is that is very helpful. Thank you, Charlene, Christiane, and Sam for obviously um, the benefit and the inspiration you've given to so many of us, and to all the participants because I think. For me personally, this is the first time I've felt that I've been in such a safe space to be vulnerable and to make mistakes. Um, and I know that a lot of us have shared some really traumatic um, events in our life, possibly for the first time publicly. So that's just been a really huge thing. So thank you for everyone for opening up and for people to open up and be authentic. I'd like to firstly acknowledge you, Sam. Thank you so much for um instituting the Speakers Institute and all of the lovely people who've attended today. I think they've done an absolutely wonderful job. I think all of their stories are worthy of stage presence. 
um, I think you'll all go very far. I just wanted to say being out of the workforce for six years, looking after little kids, and this is the first course I've ever done. And it was astounding. It blew my mind. It was beyond my expectations. And thank you, Kate, for the feedback today. That was brilliant. And it's given me the confidence to back myself because I didn't have that before. Because, you know, when you leave for a while and you come back, it's all a bit dodgy. So thank you. And it was really an uh, experience which I was looking for to give that push, uh, the last push which is needed, because I'm 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 very low on on execution. So your your story and your message gave me that push which I which I really needed. So thank you very much, and also to the fellow fellow participant for bearing with me. Oh, thank you, everyone. You've all inspired me today, and I want to thank you, Sam, for putting this on, and Christian and. Charlene, for, Charlene inspired me to come through the conversations we had. And so I'd like to thank her in particular and got a lot out of it. So thank you everyone. And thanks for all the lovely comments. First of all, I would like to say thank you. Massive thank you to every single one of you. It, it was a great company. Proximity is power. Um, I'm overwhelmed with the um, with all the love and energy and everything else. I've learned so much. And by this sheer circumstances by now that I'm sitting at home and I actually can do it. I'm blown away that I'm actually doing it. It's amazing. And I really want to thank you, Sam, for this amazing course. Yeah, I just wanted to thank every single one of you, um, especially you, Sam, and um, all of the mentors as well. There can be at times where we're alone. We think we're the only ones, we feel like we're the only ones going through that. And to share would be to burden each other but in a space like this, it actually brings us closer together. So thank you very much for sharing um, all your stories and thank you for the opportunity. I'd actually just like to thank Sam and the team so much for everything you've done, but I'd really like to thank everybody else. I have learned so much from all of you. It's just been so exhilarating. I'm so excited for each and every one of you because it's just the growth in such a short space of time has been phenomenal. So thank you all very, very much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It has been absolutely awesome. I've learned a hell of a lot today and I really feel like we're all improving. So thank you so much. It's been oh, really awesome. I wish everyone all the best on this on the course. I think it was a wonderful course. And Sam, you've created a, a, an amazing business. But I also want to congratulate the people you've got working underneath you because it wouldn't be that great if you didn't have all this wonderful resource. And, and I congratulate them for supporting you. It's excellent. Thank you very much. All the feedbacks were, were, were golden for me. I learned a lot. Plus uh, how I should not try to put two, you know, I should not try to put all the information in those six minutes. I should let the audience absorb what I'm trying to convey. They should absorb my story. And, uh, you know, so as the energy level should, should fluctuate properly at the right moment. So thank you very much for that. So I want to say, look, I've forever been doing courses and programs. I've probably spent over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in my life. Um, this was worth every cent. I'm very, very impressed with the level of knowledge of the coaches, um, and they just kept offering gold nugget after gold nugget. Um, definitely was worth every minute as well. Yeah, I really want to thank the coaches, and uh, and I've noticed a difference in everyone as well over the last couple of days as well. So, um, so thanks. I just wanted to say uh, my work relies on face-to-face -face, uh, workshops, speaking at conferences around the world. So investing in this course is really about looking to the future. So it's really an investment in the long term. It's been a really, really professionally put together course. So commendations all around to all of you. To all the staff from Speakers Institute, you guys have been really supportive and really, really lovely and encouraging. But to everybody else, for all of your honesty and your courage for stepping up here and just giving all, because I've learned so much from every single one of you and it's just been really, really good. Thank you. My name is Sarah Cordenut and a long time ago, I was one of the protégés. Now back then, I had absolutely no idea where I was going to go. I was an expert in my field, but I was working very much in the corporate space. I also had no followers on any social media accounts. I had no email list. I had no people anywhere on a database that was out there in the public market. But I knew that I needed and wanted to get out, get online and make a difference to the world. And I knew that the only way I'd be able to do that 
is to go out and start speaking, putting myself out there as an individual. And it was really confronting because there's all these kind of things that we go through. Will people like me? Will people engage with me? Will anyone even care about what I have to say? Will people mock me? Will people criticize me? Will I be torn down by my competitors or trolls? So I had all of these all of these worries, like everyone else does, not knowing where I was going to start. You know, do I start with the logo, the website, the message, the thing, the branding, <laughs> the story? It's all very, very overwhelming. So I want to reassure you guys that I was absolutely there. After going on Sam's program, um, I have gone on to um, win multiple awards. I have now got over 20,000 students in 146 countries. I have been listed by the Huffington Post as one of the top 50 must-follow female entrepreneurs. I've published 12 books, five of which have gone to international number one bestseller. I recently was headhunted by a university and now hold the record for being the youngest university director in Australian history. And I have done all of this from working in the spare bedroom in my house and now have a multi-million dollar education company with children running around. And one of the things that I really want to make clear to other people is that everyone can do this every single person. I had no special starting point. I had no investors. I've never had anyone give me money. I absolutely have just started on the corner of a kitchen table with nothing but a dream, a drive and an ambition. And that is the only thing you need to get started. This is the Celebrity Authority Show. Please welcome your host, Sam Cawthorne. Hey! We are super excited today. We have Vicky Lou in this studio. Vicky, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sam. Uh, it's my pleasure and it's my honour to um, have an interview with you. Hey, Vicky, now you are an expert in clever communication. Mm. What exactly do you mean by that? Um, I have been... I have found um, a lot of communication is lack of efficiency and effectiveness. So people are tra trapped by poor communication. Mm. So um, poor communication costs time, energy and money. And also sometimes it's reputation. Especially in this global market, mm. people are um, having difficulty in deliver their message and their product and services in different country contexts. Mm. So I create this clever communication to help the people in different countries <coughs> to bring up their energy and to bring up their passion to deliver their message in different countries. Great. So especially I want to bring the Chinese entrepreneurs to um, Australia and also in different countries and helping them to understand what's the best part in the communication yeah. that they can deliver their message out. Yeah, look, I'm really keen to unpack that with you a little bit more in a moment, but I'm also really keen to tell us a little bit more about your story, Vicky, because you're not originally from Australia. Share us a little bit more about your story. Uh, I um, actually I'm from Guangzhou, China, and I migrated to Australia since 2007. Mm. But actually, I graduated from the University of Sydney as a Bachelor of Commerce uh, since 2002. Mm, so, um, what initially made you come along to Australia and do studies here? Did your parents say that you needed, or, or this is something that you wanted to do? Mm, it's a curiosity, I think. Mm. Yeah, it's curiosity. And um, it's a part of the why i so passionate and obsessed about communication is also that um, as an Asian culture, we have um, very poor communication in the family. Yeah. And, and so you came here to Australia and you studied? Uh, commerce. Commerce, yeah. yeah. And then what did you do after that? Uh, I established my uh, own business uh, because my parents said you can't get rich 
if you just work for others. So I started my own business as a... Um, good advice, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> as a wholesale business. Yeah. Uh, it's called AWG Australia. So mainly uh, selling the uh, leather handbags to the, all the retailers in Australia. Great. Yeah. And, and how did that business go? Uh, it was awesome. Uh, we work with um, the biggest uh, online giants like Aussie Cell, Brands Exclusive, Catch of the Day, Grace Outlet, and all these uh, online giants bring uh, us uh, as a brand in Australia, and we have very good reputation and feedback from the customer that they have good quality of handbags, and they love their handbags since like five or six years old. They wow. still use our our handbags, wow. and they just love it, and say, wow, your handbags are very bad, best quality, yeah. So obviously being a successful entrepreneur, you would have then needed clever communication. Yes. Is that right? Yes, as you, as we communicate with uh, our retailers, right, so we need to have them to understand what our handbags can give them, and also what our handbag can give value to their um, to their customer as well. Uh, once there's, the, there's one time when I was in um, Day with Destiny uh, with uh, Tony Robbins, and he said, women's handbags are burdened. And he threw out all the things inside the handbags <laughs> from one of the women in, the, in, in, in DWD, yeah. and said, this is how you women and men thinking differently. Wow. So my passion is actually women need to have a better handbag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not carry too much, you know, burden um, to the to them yeah. to themselves. Yeah. So if there is someone out there that let's say might be migrating to a different culture or let's say that they want to learn how to have this clever communication as you say is there a formula is there is there like uh, uh, some secrets that you can share with me and how you can teach us to have better clever communication yes yes uh, there are six secrets of clever communication okay so the can, first can we know one... what they are yeah, yeah the of first course one? Yes, yes. <laughs> so the first one is c right so it's uh, certainty so we need to have a certainty in our communication so what's your purpose of your communication? What's the outcome that you want from the communication? And what's the content of your communication? And how you process your communication? And the second one so is... So the first one, certainty, love. Yes, yeah, certainty. Yep. And the second one is love. So you've got to love your communication because if you, if you communicate in love, emotion, then you can show your passion to the audience. Right. Also, maybe someone that you want to deliver your message or mm. product services. Mm. So you've got to love your communication, love embrace it. it, live in it, and you show your passion, you show your caring, and you show your congruent. Great. Yeah. So the second one is L. Are we allowed to know the third? Yeah, the third one is engage. So you, you've got to ha know how to engage with yeah. your audiences, engage with your investors, engage with the, the people that you want to sell your ideas or your message to. Great. Yeah. Engage. Engage, and yeah. And clever, so it, it would be a V next. So the V is, I think most people missed it, is <laughs> vocabulary. For me, because I English is my second language, okay. so I work very hard to get my message out, especially to learn the vocabulary. So use the appropriate vocabulary is very important. So you gotta do the research, you gotta do the feedback from where, when you use the vocabulary, whether it's good or whether it's appropriate. Mm, mm. So whether it's clever. Mm. So vocabulary, application is very important I love in your one. communication. That's very, very important. I totally yeah. agree. Yes. And then the next one? The next one is you've got to enjoy. So like us, we've got to enjoy our conversation and you've got to enjoy when you communicate with people. You don't just throw out a message to the <laughs> audiences or you don't just, you know, communicate with your staff in the company. Say, go do something. I totally it's agree. It's so cold. 
no totally no heart yes, you know not yes. warm enough you know yep. so i and think and then the last yeah. one r uh, r it means uh, you got to respect and review respect you got to respect the audience you gotta you can't just put yourself there to be you know very significant that i am important mm. i am the mm. one but they are important they are the ones that you want to sell your message that you want to deliver your value to them so mm. you gotta respect the audiences mm. and review you gotta review the communication regularly and you gotta review the content of the communication you gotta update it you can't just say, oh, this is the way that I communicate. And then you just keep it all oh, the way. I love it. I think this, this clever communication is very important in the current business corporation yeah. and also in the team building as well. Mm. Because I have seen a lot of people fa fail. It's not because of their product or services. It's not because of the pe personality. It's the way that they communicate. Okay. Yes. 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 Very it's important. So true. And I really love this acronym as well. Which thank you so much for sharing. I think it's very powerful. If there's, if there was one key lesson that you've learned all throughout your life, like one quote or something that you think that it was really important for you, for you, particularly for everyone out there that's watching or listening to this. If there's a, one thing that you've learned in life, what would that one thing be? Mm. Is that true? Do you have a, like a favorite quote or something? Love is everything. Mm, that's very, very powerful. Victoria. Love is power. And I didn't realize like poor communication can, um, can cause me to lose my father. So where I so obsessed and want to deliver this message to the world is like communication is very, very important. And thank you for sharing. What's, what's next for you, Vicky? You know, you've done the entrepreneurial thing. You've got this great message that the world needs to hear. What, what's next for you? What does the future look like? Uh, I would like to help the people uh, no matter they are in the company, in the family, in the society, I want to help them to have a clever communication skill and strategy to better communicate and deliver your message without compromise. Is there a book coming out? Is yes. there? Yes. Fabulous. Exciting. <laughs> uh, Vicky, what do you do to recharge yourself? Like, obviously, you know, you're a successful businesswoman. You've got this great message. You're, you're a mum, I understand as well. Uh, what do you do to recharge yourself, to fill your tank? What do you do for you? Mm, I do my morning ritual is to um, do mindfulness uh, awareness increase my awareness every day and I do the gratitude list every day for three things that I am grateful for Beautiful. and Beautiful. I will read books after my kids uh, sleep <laughs> 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 so I will read a book that I love to read yeah. and um, yeah so I just give myself me time yeah. even just half hour mm. yeah and it's certainly very important as well yeah. hey vicky thank you so much for joining us here on the celebrity authority show but look just before you go we do this segment at the end for with all of our interviewees and we have a challenge for you and okay. the challenge is 10 questions yep. in 60 second challenge okay so vicky Lou, do you do accept it. the challenge <laughs> yes let's do it all right vicky your time starts wait a sec now, favorite color? Uh, black. Favorite food? Uh, seafood. Seafood, yum. Favorite celebrity? Ah, interesting, a lot. <laughs> um, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, yeah. favorite actor? Uh, favorite actors, a lot. Um, <laughs> Leonardo. Yes. Favorite <laughs> professional speaker? Sam Cawthorn. Thank you. Favorite book? Uh, actually, now I'm reading Slay of Mouth from uh, Robert Dill. No, I haven't heard that one. Sounds amazing. Favourite movie? Uh, Inception. Great movie. Favourite city? Uh, Sydney. Favourite drink? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite pizza topping? 
Uh, ham and pie apple pizza. Oh, ham and pie apple. <laughs> yep, go to the original. And Vicky Lou, if you could be an animal, which animal would you be? Tiger. Why a tiger? Um, it's um, highly focused and independent and powerful. Oh, I love that. Vicky Lou, thank you so much for joining us. I want to help our most vulnerable people become determinators. Hi, my name is Franny Perez and I really came to Speakers Institute to get clarity. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I just knew that there was something that um, was bigger. What is a determinator? A determinator is someone who is fiercely in love with their own life. They wake up proud of who they are and what they do. It's a life by design, it's not by default. And I know that we all deserve this. And I wanna impact people on a, on a larger scale to have this. You are a very powerful speaker, but you know something? I really believe that you exist on this planet to make a difference to the masses. Thank you. And particularly to this new generation. It was bigger than me and it was bigger than what I was playing. And the difference in 48 hours was able to give me clarity and something tangible that I could actually work with and go on in life. So I can't recommend these guys enough in making a difference. Our next speaker is a nationally registered psychologist, ANZI Master Coach and Fellow of the International Association of Facilitators. He's recognised as a leading expert in the application of human-centred design to topics such as high-risk industrial safety, high-value teaming and human potential. Over the last 20 years, he has designed and delivered programs for global clients, including Rio Tinto, BHP, Boeing Aerospace, and ANZ Private Bank. His purpose is to help create workplaces that enhance the human experience. And that will be his topic today to share with you. Please welcome to the stage, Jonathan Lincoln. Magic. I have uh, in my life uh, a number of heroes. And these are men and women that I've looked at and thought, they have a characteristic that I don't, but I would like to develop. And so I looked at them. And one of my heroes is Sir Richard Attenborough. As I observe him, Sir Richard Attenborough is a man of a quiet, calm nobility. And yet, in his quiet, gentle way, he is fierce in his determination to protect the environment. And that's something that I look to and I admire greatly. Recently, I was watching one of his uh, specials and it raised in me a question. And the question was, um, why exactly are humans the top of the food chain? Because if you look at us on paper, we should not be. An example, a male silverback gorilla is 30 times stronger than you, 30. That's a big number. The fastest human to ever run ran at 27.4 kilometres per hour. And as we know, a cheetah runs at 97 kilometres an hour. But here's the kicker. The hippo runs at 40. And so we would get run down by a hippo. And hence, my question, why are we top of the food chain? We have no claws. We have no fangs. We have no chemical weapons, such as venom. We are, have, can't swim that well. We can't fly. We can't camouflage. We have no armour and our night vision is average at best. <laughs> How did we get there? Now, most of you, 99% of the people in the room are going, ha ha, it's because of our brain. Wrong. As a psychologist, I'm gonna to say to you, it's not the brain that gave us our advantage. And here's how we know that. If we go back for 300,000 years, and we are on the central plains of Africa, and here is my first ancestor. And he is on the plains by himself hunting. The reality of his situation is that at the moment he's prey. 
more things can eat him than he can eat. And yes, Sam's little monologue yesterday came from me. Um, <laughs> he's prey. But if we picked him up, and we could pick him up because he's only five foot two. So we pick him up and we put him with his tribe. Suddenly he goes from being prey to predator. And not just any predator. He becomes top predator. He becomes extinction level predator. He becomes a predator so potent that he can, for the first time in the world's history, he can wipe out another species. His tribe gives him life. His tribe makes him strong. Where he might be weak, others support. And so when one is off, not all are going to be off. Some are going to be on. And so we find out that it's not the brain that gave us the survival adaption that put us at the top of the food chain. It is the tribe. The brain knows this so well, and it is so wide for it, that for 300,000 years, it's believed that if I'm out of the tribe, I'm in, in danger. If I'm in the tribe, I'm safe. Tribe is life, solo is death. And we know that this is true. Have you ever had the experience where you find out after the event that your friends went somewhere without you? And we have that feeling, don't we? That's, that's this, that's your brain saying, hey, that's dangerous. Don't let that happen. You know, shove your way back in there. Um, the reason that solitary confinement is the worst punishment we can put a human being through, again, is related to this. Within six to eight weeks of solitary confinement, all prisoners report that their brain creates an imaginary friend for them. That's how much we need to be part of a tribe. And so over the 300,000 years that we've been evolving, the brain has been refining this to the point where neuroscientists today say that we are absolutely wired for tribe. There. there are functional centers in your brain that if you look at them as an individual, they make no sense. We can't make sense of them. But if you look at them in a pair, now they make sense. And if you look at them as part of a threesome, they make even more sense. And if you look at it as a quad, they make more sense again. Every part of your neurology is wired for tribe. When I was growing up, I had two main tribes in my life. Um, the first was a group of boys that I played basketball with. That's what we tribed around. We tribed around basketball. And to a person, they were raised in good homes. If you, when I grew up, if you lived in West Chermside, you were poor. If you lived in Chermside, you were rich. They lived in Chermside. I lived in West Chermside. In their households, they had conversations about ethics and morality, what type of person you were going to be in the world. How would you serve? Two of these boys have been in public service their whole lives. The others are all good people, all of them um, doing and contributing well to the world. Now, in their homes, when they have these conversations about ethics and morality and who you're going to be in the world, we didn't have those conversations in my home. And so when I'm with them, I want to be like them. So I listen and participate in these conversations to the best that I can. And around them, I'm like them. I'm a good person. But I had a second tribe, and this was a tribe that I was born into. And the head of that tribe was my father. And my father was a man of just unpredictable, incandescent rage. His rage was white hot. And a lot of that rage got uh, directed at me, either because he was angry at me or because I was trying to intervene for my sisters, who I didn't like to see him hitting on. And the violence was an extreme form of violence. It was, um, was life-threatening. And so that by the time I'm sort of 13, 14, 15, this violence is you know, being projected on me, and I've got it sitting inside me, and I don't know what to do with it, so I just shoot it out into society, and society was not happy with that. And it resulted in me being incarcerated on a number of occasions. And incarceration is a wholly bad thing. There is nothing good about it. If someone's been incarcerated for three years, they are paying a price, and it's a heavy, heavy price. But the one thing I got was time. I got time to look at and have to accept this very, very unpleasant reality of my life that I'm there because I chose to be there. This version of me that I picked up and was living out put me here. But I didn't have to be because there was another version of me that I had chosen to be and I knew I could, but I didn't. I chose this, so I'm here. This became so real to me that I formed this thing in my own mind that I called a version theory. And this is not a psychological term, this is a, uh, half the word is missing. Pretend it says version up the top, okay? Um, <laughs> version theory says um, there are versions of us, we all have different versions of ourselves, and we choose which version we're going to be at any given moment uh, in time. 
And I, I for example, chose that um, this version instead of that suffered. It's so much a part of my thinking that my current business is named after it in that. Small Giants Advisory is the name of the business, and we would say that our name is our philosophy, in that we would say that there are times in life when, when we act small, and we are fearful, or we're jealous, or we're insecure, or we're nasty, we might be small-minded, we might say. And in this state, what we do is we tear down, or we undermine, or we, we detract from the situation. We're part of the problem. But there's another version of us. There are times in life when we are big, and we are humble, and we're sure, and we're noble, and we're strong, and we add unto, and we construct, and we make more then. We become bigger than the problem, and we become bigger than the people who are part of the problem. And this is when we would say, you're a small giant. Same size you always are, but you're bigger than the problem at hand. We would say that small giants add more, offer more, give more, construct more, because they are more. Because more of you as a small giant turns up in the situation, hence you're able to offer more than if you're being small-minded. A little bit behind on that one. All right. And so, small giant, small-minded, all triggered by the questions you're asking. If I go into a situation and I say, for example, what the hell is wrong with him? I'm small-minded, or I'm straight up. This is a small version of me. I'm looking to blame what is wrong with him. But if I walk into the situation and I say, okay, hmm, what's a small giant version of this? Even braver question. What's a small giant version, small, small giant version of me in this? Or how do I small giant this situation? I'm immediately with my questions putting myself in small giant mode. Here's now um, the call to action, uh, which I'm going to say I don't normally do. It's thanks to Speakers Institute that I would be doing this. If I'm um, on a daily basis, I made ask one small giant question, and I made one small giant decision, and I did that over 10 days, then what would happen is at the end of the week, there might be 10 events that were small giant-like, and that would have a, a small impact. It'd have an impact in my world, but probably not the world. But if today, you all, because there's about like 100 of you, if you all did the same thing, and going forward over the next 10 days, you asked one question a day, and then one small giant question a day, and then acted on that small giant question, at the end of that week, we would have, does anyone know the number? Oh, maths is so terrible, isn't it? What's the number? A thousand, we would have like a thousand events. Now, again, we're not gonna change the world there, but we get a ripple, at least. But check this out. Because I know you all like to talk so much, um, if, if all of us, every day, asked one small giant question, took one small giant action, and did the thing that we're all good at, talked to one person a day about that, and everybody did it, at the end of the 10 days, do you know what the number is? It's one sextillion small giant, yes, <laughs> one small giant. That's a number that would get a difference in the world. And so here is my invitation. Small giants, we do things subtly. So we don't have big high fives and handshakes. If you do a small giant thing, this is the symbol, okay? So if you did something good or you think somebody you know, might be minded of being a small giant, that's what we would say to them. And so here's my invitation. Um, it's one small thing. It's one choice a day, one conversation a day to inform people about what small giants is. And if we did that, then I would say to you that the future is very, very bright for a humanity that can do good things in the world, and we would probably create a little tribe that Sir Richard Attenborough himself would be very, very happy about. <laughs>Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode here at Speakers TV. My name is Sam Cawthorn and we are super excited about Speakers TV and about these episodes that we bring to you every single weekday as well as also on every single Saturday. Guys, we'd love to hear from you. If you've got any feedback at all for us or maybe you want to comment right down right now in the chat bar about what was your biggest takeaway from today's uh, session. But also not only that, why don't you join us? 
So here at Speakers Institute, we do have a number of programs such as our online boot camps or our protege program at Speakers Tribe here. We're all about running these big, large annual conferences every year, but also not only that, there is an annual membership that you can get. We're in your city. We do have tribe gatherings, all really encouraging you going from where you are today to where you really want to be. Or maybe you want to tell your friends and your family about Speakers TV, but can I please encourage you? Why don't you like like this page, why don't you join us each day, why don't you tell other people about these episodes because we are all about really helping you on this journey to becoming that recognized voice of authority for you to find your message and your story and get that out there into the world. We are super excited about your journey so please lean in and join us today. To your success, my name is Sam Cawthorn and don't forget the best is yet to come.